Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the national anthem. Good morning. On behalf of the faculty and staff, I would like to welcome each of you here today as we celebrate the 2022 graduating class of Galax High School. Many dedicated school division officials have provided the support necessary to bring us to today's graduation ceremony, including our superintendent and the school board. We are honored to have many of these individuals present today. Please join me in recognizing the school board chair, Ms. Melissa Petty, Vice Chair, Dr. Jim Adams, Board members, Mr. Larry Spangler, Ms. Leah Hank, and Mr. Brett Sexton, and our superintendent, Ms. Susan Tilly. <clears throat> <clears throat> also joining us today are Mayor Willie Green, Vice Mayor Beth White, Travis Haynes, Sharon Ritchie, and Evan Hank. They are joint, uh, excuse me. Finally, we are uh, pleased to welcome our delegate, Israel O'Quinn. Thank you for joining us today. At this time, we are going to make a change in today's program. We are making accommodations for two well-deserving members of our Galax High School track team who will be competing for a state championship in Harrisonburg later today. We would like to recognize our two student athletes at this time and ask them to please come to the stage. Eric Allen Bagley. Javante Rashawn Keith 
Reeves. By the power vested in me by the Gay Lake City Public School Board and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I now pronounce you both graduates of Gay Lakes High School with all of the rights and privileges therein. You may move your tassels to the left. I present to you two of our graduates of the class of 2022. As they exit the graduation ceremony, Join us in a round of applause for their accomplishments and in wishing them good luck as they leave to complete, com, excuse me, compete in the VHSL Track and Field State Championship event. Congratulations. Y'all can go. Y'all can go. <laughs> Class of 2022. I am honored to stand before you this beautiful morning as we celebrate the final chapter in your high school career and look forward to the start of new beginnings ahead. Seated around you are your families, your parents, guardians, grandparents, aunts and uncles, brothers and sisters, educators, counselors and community leaders, and friends. Your journey to graduation may be unique, but the love and support you have received from these important people in your lives have played a significant role in your journey to achieving this milestone. We have a lot to celebrate today as you prepare to leave Galax High School. 35% of you earned an advanced studies diploma. 23% of you were awarded a governor's seal earning an advanced studies diploma plus nine college credits. 60% of you were career and technical education completers. Seven of you earned the bioliteracy seal and one of you graduated from governor's school. Ten of you were the new pioneers, the first group of seniors to attend Galax High School's early college program. Here you completed an additional 19 college credits during the second semester prior to graduating from high school. 55% of you earned a grade point average of 3.0 or higher, and 35% of you achieving a GPA of 3.5 or higher. Several of you excelled in band and chorus, earning district and regional recognition. 43% of you participated in varsity athletics, earning numerous district, region, and state recognitions, with some of you advancing in state competitions next week in girls' tennis and boys' soccer. 68% of you will continue your education in two- or four-year college, university, or vocational program. 29% of you will enter the workforce, and 3% of you will serve our country as members of our military. As of today, the class of 2022 has accumulated an astounding $1,061,829 in scholarships and educational assistance. Give yourself an applause. We are grateful for the continued support of our community and the scholarships provided to our students through the Galax Foundation for Excellence in Education. We are also grateful for our partnership with Withful Community College and we appreciate the many educational opportunities they have provided. Your generosity has opened the door for many bright futures and has made dreams become realities. Class of 2022, you have persevered through, through a high school experience which was disrupted by a worldwide pandemic. The challenges you faced were like no others. You kept the faith in times of uncertainty and now you, your, those challenges are a testimony to who you have become. I hope you will take pride in how far you have come, faith in how far you can go, but never forget to reflect upon the journey. Be proud of what you've accomplished and be proud of who you are. In the weeks and months and years ahead, I challenge you to live boldly and believe in yourself. Expectations will be high because of all that you have accomplished. I challenge you to always show up on time, show pride in your work and in everything that you do. Lead with dedication, determination, a strong work ethic, and enthusiasm. I share a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. Enthusiasm is the mother of effort, and without it, nothing great is accomplished. Be enthusiastic in keeping your dreams alive in spite of obstacles you may experience. Do not give up when things get difficult, and trust in what got you to this point. 
Remember, you can do whatever you set your mind to because you are prepared as a graduate of Galax High School. Seniors, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your principal. I am so very proud of you all. Everyone here today cannot wait to see the many things you accomplish in the years to come. I can assure you, great things are well within your grasp. Congratulations, class of 2022.
I have the honor of introducing our guest speaker for the 2021-2022 Galax High School graduation ceremony. Mr. John D. Bassett III has been a leader in industry in our area for decades. He began this 55-year journey as a teenager and has risen to be chairman of Vaughn Bassett through Mr. Va Mr. Bassett's leadership and dedication to creating 100% domestically made products, Vaughn Bassett has become the largest wooden bedroom furniture manufacturer. He was featured in the book Factory Man and has published his own book entitled Making It in America. Please join me in welcoming to Galax High School, Mr. John D. Bassett III. Good morning. Graduates, students, parents, staff, and guests, it's a pleasure to address you today. I have to remark that over 60 years ago, I sat in a seat just like you are sitting in when I graduated from high school. But there's a big difference between where you are and where I was. You have experienced one of the most dramatic events in our lifetime, a pandemic. The last time we had a pandemic was 1918. That was 101 years ago. You and your school rose to the challenge, and you have prevailed. Unfortunately, over a million Americans lost their lives. But you did not allow the pandemic to destroy you or your determination. And you will keep that for the rest of your life. You overcame this challenge. Through it all, you continued your education with success, and that's evident today because you're here. You will need the same fortitude as you move forward with the rest of your life. This is not going to be the only challenge you have. Life is full of challenges, and you have to meet them, and you have to address them. I want to discuss one and what we did, and maybe it can help you. Vaughn Bassett Furniture came to this country, or this city, in 1919. We're over 100 years old. And in 2001, our government signed and approved the International Trade Commission, which allowed Asia, and that's China, Vietnam, Mal uh, Malaysia, and other countries, to ship their products tariff-free into this country. The question was very plain. What companies were going to survive and which ones were going to fail? And what did we have to do to be able su to survive? At Bone Bassett, we came up with what I call the five great rules. Those rules saved our company. They did then, and they're doing it today. We didn't read this from any economist. We didn't read it from Harvard Business School. It is something that we developed right here in Galax, Virginia. It worked for us. It saved us. The question is, can it work for you in the future? I want to give you these five rules. Take them with you. Hopefully it can help you the same way it helped us. Rule number one is attitude. We had to change the attitude. People were asking us when were they going to get their severance pay? How long would we continue paying their health insurance after we closed the factory? They had given up. They were quitting. We had to turn this whole attitude around. You're not going to win in life with a negative attitude. You have to have a positive attitude. And you have to create that. We had to turn that all around. How do you turn an attitude around? You do it with leadership. 
You do it with people who want to lead and succeed, not people who want to quit and fail. And the way you can identify a leader is by one method. That leader must possess the talent that he will never ask or she will never ask anybody to do anything that they're not willing to do themselves. You've got to get down there with your people and you have to set the example. One of the greatest leaders in the 20th century was Winston Churchill. France had fallen. Russia and the United States was not in the war. The UK was all by itself. And in Parliament, he was asked, what is your purpose? What's your goal? And how are you going to do it? And Churchill stood up and said, our goal is victory. And the way we're going to do it, we're going to fight them on the beaches. We're going to fight them on the landing grounds. We're going to fight them in the streets and the hills. And he went along, and then he finished that sentence with that very famous saying, he said, we will never surrender. There was nobody in the United Kingdom did not know where that country was going. And he literally saved democracy for all of us. It's leadership. Now, how do you implement the attitude and the leadership? Number one is you have to be willing to change and improve and three very important words, again, again, and again. We are living in a nation today. We are living in a world today that is changing constantly, certainly with technology. It's certainly with products that come from some other country. And how are we going to adapt and compete with them if we don't change and improve? But once you change and improve, and this is extremely important, you start the next day to do it again. Because if you just sit back and wait and your competition catches up with you, you have no advantage. We have to move at the speed of light. We have to get out there and get the job done. And one is we have to communicate. And I will tell you, we deal with a lot of trucking companies, and we have to call them and find out when they're going to pick up our products and et cetera. And everybody uses email, and everybody uses text and et cetera, and they say, leave me a message, and they, sometimes they call you back and et cetera. And one of our largest shippers was talking to me one day, and he said, what time do you get up in the morning? I said, 4.30. He said, I get up at 5. He said, let's set up a time between 6 and 6.30. Here's my cell phone number. I gave him my cell phone number. And he said, we're going to talk whenever we need to between 6 and 6.30. And we would get on the telephone. Believe me, Alexander Graham Bell developed a wonderful instrument called a telephone. You can move a heck of a lot faster with a telephone than you can a text or an email. We would talk for 10 minutes. He would say, this is what I, I'm going to do. And I would say, all right, what do you want me to do? And by 6.20, nobody had gone to work. And we knew what to do. We changed and improved again, again, and again. It is extremely important. What's rule number four? Rule number four is, in life, don't panic. The easiest battle that anybody will win is when the other side gives up without a fight. They quit. America got in the habit of quitting. We had to convince our competitors. We had to convince the people that worked with us. We had to convince our customers we were not going to panic. We were going to come up with new products, new ideas, and we were going to move forward. We were not backing up to anybody. And the people in the factory all at once started getting this. They said, we're dealing with somebody. 
of some company that's not going to run away. No, we're not going to do that. That was so important. I remember one time we bought a very expensive new piece of equipment. It was worth a lot of money, and it came in, and we were setting it up, and the people came and said, did you buy this? We said, yes. And they looked at us, and they said, you're not going to close, are you? I said, you don't spend this kind of money on new equipment, and you are going to close. We have no intention of closing. And they started believing in the company. What's rule number five? It's teamwork and communications. Teamwork and communication. Many times you have things to do on your own. Most of the times we are part of a team. You have to be part of that team. And then to make, make that team work, you got to talk among yourselves. And you've got to get your people on that team. And they've got to understand we're doing this together. That's communications. And I was, when I'd give speeches, I always started them three ways. I said, I'm going to give you the good news, I'm going to give you the bad news, and I'm never going to lie to you. Americans can take bad news if they know you're not lying. We never lied. And at the same time, we would give them a plan on how to succeed. So when you think about what happened down there, that's what happened. Those are the five great rules. We practiced them then, we practice them today. And it can be practiced by corporations, sport teams, or, uh, organizations, but it can also be practiced by individuals. And it ha happened right over that hill on Chestnut Creek. And it can happen to you. You are lucky that you went through the COVID because you know you can live through a challenge. There will be more challenges in your life. Take, pick them up and take them on. That's the secret to success. Those are the rules that we practice and we still do. I hope they will serve you as well as they've served us. Again, thank you. And I want to wish this graduation class all Godspeed and the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bassett. Thank you so much.
Good morning. Welcome to the graduation for the class of 2022. As my fellow salutatorian, valedictorian, I discussed options for our speeches. We kept returning to memories and lessons learned throughout our years in school. Thinking about these lessons reminded us of the book, All I Ever Really Needed to Know, I Learned in Kindergarten by Robert Fulgham. We decided to create our own speeches based on the ideas and values our school and community have imparted to us. Please allow us to present all the things I really needed to know I learned through Galax City Public Schools. Taking turns and sharing teaches you to be a better person. For instance, in Galax Elementary School, I learned to take turns in the tie-dye chair with Lacey Hash in kindergarten and how to share a lunch table with Caleb Gurton in sixth grade. Yes, we learned the academic curriculum of how to add and subtract, how to find a noun in a sentence, and even how to build a leprechaun trap. However, realizing we were all in this together and knowing how to properly interact allowed us to start building relationships with each other that have lasted these past 13 years. Gaining responsibility is a needed step to becoming an adult. Once we entered Galax Middle School, we were given more responsibilities. We started switching classes, we started playing school sports, and we learned that at school dances, no one really dances. <laughs> Here we got our first taste of clubs, pep rallies, and field trips, and we definitely started to learn what drama was. We all got taller, the boys' voices began to crack, and we girls started to travel together to the bathroom. And then we got to high school. We moved up to varsity sports, took honors in college classes, and finally got to go to the homecoming dance. We took driver's ed with Coach G, and Kobe Adams finally learned how to use scissors in earth science. <laughs> More was expected of us, and we rose to the challenge. In our sophomore year, COVID hit. We continued to learn in our pajamas and Zoom classes from home, watch live stream sports, and made lots of group chats to keep in touch. We came back this year in person and ready to do it all. We brought back student sections, actually had fun at pep rallies, and got to play games without wearing masks. We thank all of our teachers, parents and guardians, and anyone else who has supported us not only through these past few difficult years, but through our whole journey up to now. Despite the obstacles, we persevered and are now stronger for it. We leave today to face what comes next in our lives. I would like to leave you with this quote from the book, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. And it's true, no matter how old you are, when you go out into the world, it is best to hold hands and stay together. It's my hope that the Galax High School class of 2022 will do just that. Robert Fulgham is correct about holding hands and sticking together, and I know how true it is as I look out at my friends in their cap and gowns and remember swinging on the swing set in elementary school, playing elimination in gym class, and taking a sick day to get ready for homecoming. It is through moments like these that I've learned all I ever really needed to know. I have learned to appreciate the simple things in life. As a class, we have faced many challenges these past few years that were brought on by the worldwide pandemic the school closure during our sophomore year, our ever-changing and unpredictable junior year, and finally, the gradual return to somewhat of a normal senior year. And while these challenges were difficult and at times overwhelming, I think if we all looked deep enough, there were hidden blessings amongst the chaos. I now have a new perception of the world and have learned to appreciate the simple stuff. I learned the value of friends. I know to value the laughs shared at lunch and to cherish the pregame get-togethers. I truly understand how precious my family is and how important it is to let them know they mean the world to me daily. I also appreciate the opportunity to have an education. During our last two years, I miss touching paper, cutting and pasting, and sitting beside the kid in class that always made you laugh, even on your worst days. Basically, I learned that life, I do life with people, and people help me do life. It is simple, but more profound than words can express. Teachers matter. 
Not only have our peers impacted our lives, but so have our teachers. Personally, there are many days that I came to school with a heavy heart and a lack of confidence, but I knew I could always count on my teachers to brighten my day with support and encouragement. Sure, we all had that one teacher that drove us crazy, always expecting us to do just a little more. That is the teacher we will never forget. That is the teacher who helped keep us on track and helped push us to be the best we could be. Our teachers helped to mold us into who we are today. They've always wanted what is best for us and were always willing to do whatever it took to help us become successful. I know how important every person is and how we impact the lives of others. Fulgham says it best when he states, without realizing it, we fill important places in each other's life. It's that way with the guy at the corner grocery, the mechanic at the local garage, the family doctor, teachers, neighbors, co-workers, good people who are always there, who can be relied upon in small, important ways. I'm grateful to many people for being those good people in my life. It is through shared experiences with my family, friends, and community that I am who I am. As we begin this next chapter in our lives, never forget the impact high school left on your life. Never forget the memories you've made or the lessons you've learned. Use your knowledge and skills to impact the lives of others. You may never know how your words or actions will affect those around you. You are important today, tomorrow, and forever. I'm so thankful I had the opportunity to spend the thir past 13 years in Gaelic schools. Thank you to everyone who supported me and encouraged me along the way. Good morning, class of 2022. Throughout all of my years being involved in Galax City Public Schools, I have learned many things. My high school years, however, have taught me the most. I have learned the importance of fairness, incorporating a balanced lifestyle, and cleaning up my, m my own messes along the way. Fairness is important to me because in these past four years, I have learned how I should treat others and myself in order to have a successful life. Fairness begins with the foundation of following rules and keeping promises. Unlike changing the rules to receive the outcome that you think would best benefit yourself and your agenda, my mom and dad have taught me that even if it doesn't go your way, the rules must be followed in order to give everyone an equal chance. They have taught me that picking your own winners and losers isn't right. Promises also strengthen the foundation of fairness and they instill a sense of selflessness. My mom and dad have always made sure to fulfill the promises they have made to me. They have taught me to follow through with my promises instead of giving others false hope, or worse, changing the basis of promises behind others' backs in order to benefit themselves first. Although the real world isn't always fair, it's mine and our duty to ensure that everyone reaps what they sow. While following rules and keeping up with education is extremely important, having a balanced lifestyle is also beneficial. Sacrificing a few hours of your day to do something that you are passionate about can help to strengthen other as aspects of your life. I have learned that enjoying my hobbies while working hard in school can relieve some of the stress placed upon me in the modern world. Taking time to decompress and let your mind be cleared ensures that we perform to the best of our ability while keeping ourselves happy and healthy. Out of these lessons I have learned, I believe that learning the importance of cleaning up my own messes has been the best. Cleaning up my own messes is better translated as taking responsibility for my own actions and words. My dad has been the greatest example of this lesson to me. He has always apologized when he was wrong, and he has always made an effort to communicate clearly with me. Even when communication isn't clear, he makes sure to listen to me until he understands where exactly I am coming from. Unlike merely hearing instead of truly listening to me when I'm upset and telling you that I chose this path, my dad makes sure to communicate and apologize where he misunderstood, was wrong, or wasn't clear and upfront with what was going on in that moment. He is why I will always cherish the importance of taking responsibility for my own actions and making it right to others when I realize I am wrong, instead of concealing the guilt and presenting myself as all-knowing and always right. Fairness, incorporating a balanced lifestyle, and cleaning up my own messes are just a few of the most important lessons I have learned in these past 13 years. I encourage each and every one of you to think about the important lessons you have learned and incorporate them as we all go our separate ways. I would like to thank my family, my teachers, my true friends, and Almighty God for sh supporting me through this roller coaster of an experience, and I wish each and every one of you the best. Thank you.
Row one, please rise. Kobe Joe Adams. Kaylee Diana Alley. Danielle Letitia Anderson. Randall Ian Ashworth. Xiomara Araceli Vanegas Turcios. Abby Grace Black. Jasmine Renee Blevins. Aaron Grace Bowers. Acura Diane Bryson. Jaden Jaquez Bird. <laughs> Miriam Carranza Torres. Row two, please rise. Isabella Leanne Klein. Alexander Gray Cooley. McKinley Jade Cox. Caden Mark Krause. Mark Anthony Ryan Denton. Lois Haley Dickerson. Hannah Grace Dixon. Mally Catherine Edwards. Peyton Elizabeth Edwards. <clears throat> Mylene Alejandra Escamilla.
Cadence Noel Fell. Elizabeth Grace Fiergal. Row three, please rise. Chloe Page Funk. Bianca Estrella Garcia. Cristian Rigoberto Garcia. Marlena Camille George. Caleb Jason Gurton. Angel Nicole Guess. Destiny Faith Gonzalez. Riley Brianne Goodman. <laughs> Michaela Cheyenne Graham. <laughs> Lacey Rose Hash. Ronald Isaac Horton. Jalen Madison Jackson. Row four, please rise. Kylie Madison Jones. Nolan Turner Lawrence. <laughs> Jacob Dakota Leaf. <laughs> Isaiah Curtis James Lemming. Victoria Sage Leonard. James Lyle Lewis II. Maria Justina Lopez Castro.
Selena Maria Lopez. Chloe Grace Lundy. Caleb Breyer McMillan. Taylor Scott Montgomery. Juan Manuel Morales. Row five, please rise. Raquel Socorro Morales. John Caleb Olinger. Samuel Isaiah Olinger. Samantha Lynn Olivo. Cesar Perez Solis. <laughs> Taylor Allen Poole. <laughs> Jaira Alexandra Quesada Brown. Matias Daniel Reina Mazarriegos. <laughs> Makaya Joel Roberts. Fernando Robles Betancourt. <laughs> Brianna Rosales Miramontes. Row six, please rise. Connor Dwayne Rosenbaum. James Nathan Brown Rosenbaum. Jonathan Salinas Gallegos. Brender Sanchez Rojas.
Ty Anthony Sapone. Mia Renee Sawyers. Ian Chaos Surratt. Kayla Brooke Underwood. Rocio Yareli Urbina Salgado. Connor Evan Weatherman. Josiah Sage White. Hope Noel Wyatt. Milton Darius Saldivar. Our graduates, please stand. By the power vested in me by the Gay Lake City School Board and the Commonwealth of Virginia, I now pronounce you all graduates of Gay Lakes High School with all the rights and privileges therein. You You may turn your tassels at this time. Thank <laughs> you. 